Hey guys, what's up? Pixels here. In today's video, I'm giving my new Survivor tier list on Evil Dead the game since the blacksmith uh, was added to the game. Uh, we had a few changes of a few of the survivors as well, so we'll be rating those. And I've had time to actually play through, you know, all the new all the new changes with each character as well, including like the leader pink fuck upgrades and stuff like that. But anyways, let's jump straight into this. So the first one is Amanda. And Amanda, I'm just not a huge fan of her. Um, she hasn't really had a change since the... You know since the game launched pretty much and honestly she's just not a great character compared to all the rest of the characters including in the hunter category uh she's just not as beneficial as you know people say like she's very one-dimensional you know most of the time she's just stuck running a blunderbuss and you have to run a blunderbuss build with her i mean you can run like pistol builds and stuff but you know if, thinking of efficiency here and how well you know you can get out how much you can get out of the character and stuff and how well you can play them honestly i i'm i'm putting her down in dt i think she's the worst survivor in the game uh, i know a lot of people will be like oh well i got like so many you know so much damage with amanda this game and you know that's all great and all like i can get high damage numbers with amanda as well She's a very casual uh, character, and she's definitely not a character that you'd put into a meta team or anything like that. So for me, she's going into D tier. And like I said, it's mainly because she's just so one-dimensional. You know, she has the infinite ammo perk that only really works well with, you know, crossbow or, you know, something like a blunderbuss to get the last chance uh, benefits all the time. Uh, but like I said, you can get high damage with her. It's all the other abilities around that, like, start with a 9mm pistol, you know. The 9mm pistol in this game, you know, it can be kind of good for crowd control, but at the end of the day, you know, taking down boss units and stuff is just not going to be that great, especially even strong possessed units. So uh, you're probably going to burn through a lot of ammo before you can even touch uh, <laughs> a decent amount of health off the off the unit. Um, So David, David, I'm going to put possibly C tier, yeah, because... I feel like he's a decent support character. He has the potential to burn demon bosses out of their infernal energy and stuff so they can, like, despawn. And, you know, not even bosses, but, you know, possess units in general. Uh, so he does have that potential there, which is really nice. And he also has a nice damage reduction perk as well. Um, unfortunately, I'm not a huge fan of his uh, nail gun mastery. I think that's really shit. I don't know why they give him that. Uh, because, you know... I think supports get like a minus 20% on ranged weapon debuff or any or something like that in anyways. So all this ranged weapon mastery does is actually just put that at a flat, um, you know, default nail gun damage. And the nail gun does not have great balance bar damage either or anything like that. So it's just a kind of pointless weapon mastery that's thrown into the game, uh, which sadly brings the character down for me. Um, He's good in pre-made squads, solo queue, he's he's okay, he's not a very strong character in solo queue. Uh, you'll probably more have more benefit like solo queue and with Evil Dead 1 Ash, even Pablo, or you know, even the Blacksmith. So I'm going to put him in C tier, like I say, he's not absolutely terrible, but you know, I think he is a, a decent survivor. Uh, me is a bit weird. Uh, I think I put me in B tier last time. She hasn't moved for me. Uh, what has happened though is her active ability has been fixed where it did have a bug where you didn't actually get the 20% damage buff that you were supposed to like after a demon grabs you or something. So it is nice that uh, they fixed that. So, you know, I think she's like a, a mid, mid tier character. I don't think she's anything groundbreaking. Uh, you know, a lot of the time if a me is playing on your team, they're actually more of a threat than they are help. Uh, which does bring the character down for me. If she wasn't so, like, focused around the fear mechanic and, you know, being possessed and having the fear threshold actually buffing her damage up, then she'd be a solid character pick. But, uh, like I said, there's certain ways you can play me to get really, be like, really high efficient and beneficial gameplay out of her. But for me, I think she belongs in B tier. Okay, so Hunter Ash, I'm going to put in A tier. Uh, personally, you know, if this was a solo queue tier list, I would put him higher and I'd put him in S tier because, you know, it, it's a totally different type of um, dynamic here. But, you know, during pre-mades and stuff, you know, he's, he becomes kind of less helpful because, you know, you have stronger survivors on your, on your team, obviously. So, uh, it, like I said, he can carry solo queue really well. So I would put him S tier for solo queue. But for the, the sake of this and for what he offers... Uh, he is going A tier for me. You know, he hasn't had any changes. Uh, you know, he starts with the double barrel. He's quite a generic character, you know, start with the double barrel, double barrel mastery. You know, you can find crates with him really nice, and he has the nice exorcism ability. So at least all four of his perks are useful, and you will get 100% use out of them pretty much every game that you play. Uh, so for me, I think he's a, a solid pick to go into A tier. Like I said, I would put him higher, but, you know, this is not a solo queue tier list. This is... 
you know, how useful the characters are um, overall, sort of, you know, even in pre-mids and, you know, factor in some solo queue situations as well. Uh, but he can clutch objectives really well. You know, he is a hunter. Hunters are pretty much... Uh, I wouldn't say they're so strong right now because of the weird uh, trap bug that's in the game. I don't know if it's a bug or, you know, if that was intended. I think Saber said it was a bug where, you know, you set off a trap and you actually can't dodge it anymore. So, unfortunately, hunters for me with that have kind of dropped down a bit because they get smacked around pretty easily off traps. So you kind of have to change your build around to get some more damage reduction off the traps. So that way you're not dealing with that shit so much. Um, but yeah, like I said, AT, I think the sweet spot for this guy. Uh, Ed, Ed, I'm probably going to put B tier just a little bit higher than Mia. Uh, <laughs> Ed's a weird one. I don't like basing characters around RNG. When RNG gets involved with characters like Ed, you know, you know, you could pick Ed and, you know, you won't find one legendary crate or one purple crate or anything like that. Uh, you know, he's he's really a messy character and I don't like messy characters in this game. I don't like characters that are focused around RNG mechanics. Um, I, I think what I like to do the best really for all, and this goes for my builds and, and you know, what characters I pick, is that I like to have something going into the game and know that I'm going to get use out of it all the time. And that's how I design my builds the best I can as well. Because I know I'm going to get use out of all my skills. If I pick a skill in a skill tree or something and, you know, I don't get use out of it, I just feel like it's been wasteful for the character or I've been wasteful for the team. I've been letting the team down. And, you know, this guy has crossbow mastery. And, um, you know, maybe if you play on PC, you'll get better use out of that than someone on controller. But <laughs> the crossbow doesn't shoot straight for me. And, you know, I've, I've seen it happen for a lot of other people where they're firing the crossbow dead on and it's like shooting off into the fucking stars. <laughs> and so uh, I think B tier for Ed probably is the nice spot. Uh, Kelly, Kelly's been had a nice little melee buff and she's a really difficult character to place on the tier list because the way I see her with Hunter is that she can be one of the most efficient Hunters to play. And I'm saying that because... She offers the melee damage with the meat hammer. But again, it's if you find a meat hammer. And, you know, to be honest, she does still get a nice little melee buff um, on any other weapon with her, uh, you know, Battle Frenzy, I think it's called, uh, where she stays in combat. She gets a percentage bonus on melee damage. So that can kind of help out and it can save ammo. So it makes her a quite an efficient hunter. And not only that, but she has a nice 25% bleed damage that you can trigger no matter how often you dodge. Uh, so you can constantly dodge and trigger bleed damage. So that's quite nice. It will do a 25% of that damage over five seconds, of course. So it is nice to do that. And she can be quite devastating for your teammates, though. So if you do get possessed, she can be quite uh, horrible. So uh, I probably put her high B tier. Um, obviously, we're going to put some more characters in this in this tier list, but I think high B tier is a good selection for her. I think I might have had her in C tier previously, but I think she belongs in there for me. Uh, Annie, I've had quite a bit of time playing Annie since the previous patch, and obviously we've got some pink fuck upgrades, and Annie actually feels really, really strong now, um, but I'm probably going to put her uh, A tier for me. Um, you know, I know, I've never been a huge fan of Annie, but... The way she is, that she's a hunter now, um, you know, well, she's a leader, but she feels like a hunter now with the faster reload speed. Um, having, like, four dodges on her and stuff like that is just really, really awesome. And if you spec her right, you can get a really good, uh, solid build going on her where she can be a, a real headache for demon players, especially if you run, like, fast forward with, you know, increased melee damage, increased range damage as well. It can really make this character, um, like I said, pretty much overpowered uh especially with the pink fuck upgrades but um yeah for me i think i'm gonna put a ear to it like i said with the balance bar damage as well which is a really solid pick for the leader category um el jefe el jefe i'm gonna have to put uh it's a tough one you either put a less than annie or just better than annie because he is really strong don't get me wrong like having the, the spam finishes and stuff he can actually have increased melee damage now as well, so he can spam his finishes even easier. Uh, I don't actually think the increased melee damage really helps him out that much, um, but obviously having the fear reduction there, or the fear resistance for the team is really good as well. Uh, I think I'll put him A tier, just below Annie. Uh, I wouldn't say, you know, he's going to be an absolute god at winning objectives and stuff like that, but... You know, the fact is, if you get four dodges on this guy, you know, you can spam iframes with him really easily. 
uh, you know, constantly buffing up your team as well. It's actually a really, really solid uh, player style, really solid character that you can bring to the table for your team. Uh, so for me, I probably put him A tier now with the pink fuck upgrades as well. Lord Arthur is a bit of an iffy one for me. Uh, with the pink fuck upgrades, it's kind of made him into a warrior now. And it's a four dodge warrior, which is really, really awesome and strong. So I think for solo queue, that's really beneficial. And also a nice little damage buff to the team as well. Uh, I'll probably put him just below El Jefe. So for me, leaders have gone up into A tier, like primarily because just to how strong they are. Having them extra dodges, the extra melee damage, the faster attack speeds, the faster reload speeds, it's really made them more beneficial for the team. And to be honest, I think it's quite overkill what they've done with them. So uh, for how strong they are right now, I think they belong in A tier and probably in that order as well. And, you know, <laughs> it hurts me to say this, but Annie's probably the best leader in the game right now um, just because of the range damage and also having the balance bar damage that is really nice uh, for that character and for your team as well. So uh, the next one I'm going to put in is Evil Dead 1 Ash. Um, I think if you pick a solid Evil Dead 1 Ash and, you know, you're quite efficient with the character, he's relatively strong as a support character. Um, he does have some weird uh, perks, though, with the mark target and perks that I don't think anyone's really been a fan of since launch. Uh, so they really need to look at those and maybe adjust those in the future. But I'll probably put him uh, above David in C tier. Um... Again, he is really good in team comms, and to be honest, he can outperform Cheryl sometimes in certain like in certain team comms and how well you play him. But overall, you know, with just two useful perks, and you know, if you can get the the headshot mark target, is is can it can be nice, especially if you've got hunters on your team and stuff like that. But for me, I think those two perks really bring this character down. And like I said, he can outperform a Cheryl sometimes and he can really work out well in competitive team uh, strategies because, you know, he's melee damage focused and, you know, he can heal up people with that melee damage as well. So, you know, if you're running like a sort of competitive team, then uh, yeah, I would put him in probably higher. But because of the character, when you're having like two useful perks, really, I, I had to bring him down, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but he is, a, he is a good pick, don't get me wrong, like... You know, C tier is not bad. Like, you don't want to be in D tier because those characters are fucking, for me, are just useless. But, you know, having them in C tier doesn't mean they're terrible. It doesn't mean they're really bad or anything like that. I just think, in terms of the way things are laid out right now, um, Evil Dead 1 Ash belongs there. Uh, and probably, you know, better than David, definitely. Uh, so... Uh, the next one, Cheryl. Cheryl just goes straight into S tier for me. You know, HM Scholars all just buffing up loads of heals for the team. Uh, very heal focused, a nice support character. It's what a support character should be. Um, like I said, like I said, it's it's different situations, it's different theories and things like that. Um, but from my personal experience, uh, playing Cheryl is just ridiculous how much health you can give to the team. So uh, for me, I think she belongs in S tier and she won't change until she gets a nerf because, you know, it's that free healing that she gives with the ability and then she has eight callers that she can drink and, you know, constantly give even more health per Shem's caller for the team as well. So... Uh, for me, she's staying in S tier until she gets enough. And I've had her in S tier and all my other built, um, survivor tier lists. So uh, the next one is Pablo. Pablo's had some nice little buffs given to him. Uh, he can carry an extra amulet now. He can give uh, a bit more shield to the team as well. Almost a full shield bar, which is kind of nice. Uh, for me, uh, I'll probably put him... Oh, it's hard to decide if he's better or worse than David. It's a very difficult decision because... You know, David is a solid character, but Pablo is solid as well. And, you know, for me, they're kind of almost similar uh, in terms of, you know, benefits for the team. Um, but, you know, if you're running Pablo with Warriors, then, again, that's really good because, you know, you drop an amulets for Warriors that can pop a shield and then get two shield bar lengths out of that. Um, so, again, it's it's all situational, but... For me, I, I, I'll probably just put him a bit more higher than David because Pablo can offer shields and amulets a lot to the team. Not only that, but making himself quite tanky as well with the amulets and shields, depending on what build you do, of course. Um, but if you know you're running reinforced amulets, shield length buffs, and then you know you can take amulets for yourself, 
And, you know, getting that up to four uh, shield bars with this guy, you know, you can take quite a lot of damage, which is really nice. So, uh, like I said, I think it works out well having him around in the C tier category. Again, C tier does not mean that they're terrible. All right, Army of Darkness Ash, straight into S tier. <laughs> I've had loads of debates on Discord about this and stuff. And honestly, you cannot take this guy out of S tier. The reason being you can't take this guy out of S tier is the damage reduction that he gets off his potion. It's really strong. And not only that, but this guy can regen his own health over and over again. Uh, you know, spamming finishers, drinking the potions can regen his health as well. It can offer a lot of damage for the team too. So you spec this guy right. He is my main um, character that I have been playing since launch. So if you spec him right, you can really, really just outperform anyone else in the game or on the team uh, if you do play him right, of course. Uh, he is a character that requires a lot of efficiency, but, you know, if you do spec him right, like I said, you can really, really get a lot of benefits from playing this character. Um, and he can win games <laughs> compared to other characters. Um, you know, he can't, like, he is the biggest game changer for me, uh, well, apart from Henry. Um, the reason why he's the biggest game changer for me, because like I said, is just the regenerating health all the time. That is saving shemps, that is saving resources for the team, and that just makes things so much easier. And, you know, he's really good for slaying boss units and possessed units too. So, for me, that's why I, he belongs in S here, and he won't drop out of that for me for a long time unless he gets some serious nerfs. Uh, the only problem is, is his chainsaw mastery. You can do chainsaw builds on this guy if you wish, but you won't hit a lot of damage with that, and especially with the hit detection as well. Um, so, the main thing for me when I run this guy is like a sword or a lumberjack axe. Uh, mainly the Lumberjack Axe, because I get Hyper Armor, I can deal more damage that way and not get interrupted during my attacks. So, S tier for me. He has some really strong skills on that character. Um, the next one, Henry, is going in the S tier as well. And um, To be honest, if you're going to do it in order, I'd put Army of Darkness Ash as the best uh, character in the game, and then I'd put Henry and then Cheryl, uh, definitely. So Henry, you know, self-explanatory. The dude is basically invincible. Uh, <laughs> you know, he's, he's got a lot of health. He can trigger his invincibility. He can get clutch revives in situations where other characters just can't do that. And it's, again, it's a game-changing situation. Um, but like I said, I think Army of Ash just provides a lot more um, for the team and for himself in general to what Henry does. I know revives uh, can change a game, but like I said, Army of Darkness Ash, you know, he's offering the damage output there as well. He's not just a tank where, for me, Henry's always just the tank. I mean, you can get some good damage with this guy, but the weird thing is with Army of Darkness Ash is like he's the hybrid of that because he has the damage reduction uh, on his potion. And obviously you don't have the potion all the time, but... You know, if you run quicker cooldown on this guy, you have damage reductions going with him, and then you're having damage buffs as well. Uh, like I said, he's like a hybrid of damage and tank, and it just makes him really, really strong. So, uh, Scotty, Scotty for me is going to go A tier. Um, I'll probably put him uh, probably just there, just above Annie, El Jefe, and Lord Arthur, because... <laughs> I've been playing a bit of Scotty lately, and the dude with the... You know, he has a mastery around the Lumberjack Axe, and to me, that's just straight into A tier for me because, you know, it's the best weapon in the game, and, you know, you spec this guy right for the Lumberjack Axe, you can just devastate demons. So, for me, he belongs in A tier. Now, we're finally onto the fun one. <laughs> um, so, obviously, we've gone over all the characters that were already in the game, and, you know, obviously, they've had some different changes from this last update, so... We did get the new character, the Blacksmith. Uh, the Blacksmith, for me, is good, but he has his, he has the cons of playing him, unfortunately. He has a lot of pro, pros and cons. Uh, I think the cons can kind of outweigh the pros on this guy. So, yes, he has melee mastery. Yes, he is a tank. Uh, you know, he has three dodges because he is a support character. However, he can't use a ranged weapon. And playing a support character, for me, uh, it's very important to have a ranged weapon. Mainly because, you know, if a warrior gets possessed or something, you are literally fucked. If a warrior has a fast attacking weapon or something, you can't run away, you can't shoot them. And for me, that is like always the primary thing on a support character. Um, the primary defense against your own teammates is having ranged weapons. So uh, it's actually happened to me a few times where I've died with this guy because uh, I haven't been able to run away from a warrior that has, you know, hits, hits stunning weapons like a staff or something like that. Um, and I can't get them off me because I don't have a ranged weapon either, so that's very difficult, and it's not as simple as, like, dodging and running away and stuff. Uh, however, he is very strong so in solo queue. Um, so for me, I'm going to put him C tier. 
uh, down below here. A lot of people have said, oh, he's the best support in the game now. Uh, these people, believe me, are talking out of their ass. The guy, the, 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 the buying into the hype way too much with this character. Um, for the usefulness, like I said, you get more use out of David and Pablo for the team, especially as Cheryl as well. And then Evil Dead 1 Ash. Um, I've just realized I got four supports in C tier there. Um, and the reason being is that, like I said, it's just, they're not terrible characters. Like I said, they're not terrible like Amanda. In C tier, that's where they belong because they're just, they're they're strong, but they're not as good as, you know, characters like uh, El Jefe bringing stuff to the team with fast forward and damage buffs and stuff like that. Um, but again, they're not terrible characters. You can still pick any of these support characters and still do really well with them. I think just overall what they bring to the team and how efficient you can play them. Um, the problem is with the blacksmith is that he's very RNG focused. I don't like him um, being so RNG focused. You know, you can like you can go and watch some videos where it's like you know craft legendary weapons with this guy. It makes him the it automatically makes him the best support character. Clearly. Um, but it really doesn't, uh, you know, you can craft a legendary weapon and it could just be a fucking meat cleaver. And most of the time you only got to get, uh, to one legendary weapon per game, depending on how much you loot. And not only that, but you're wasting more time looting when you could be helping your team out as well. You're wasting your own time, uh, wasting more time for the team, you know, gathering scraps and stuff. And you can get them during objectives by killing units and things like that. So overall, if you are playing this character, uh, you know, you'll generally just be picking up scraps as you're playing him. Um, if you don't spam the craft so much, you can save up to 50 scraps. Um, but like I said, for me, it's like a bit ability that you're only going to get one use out of, or one useful use out of. And even then, it's just not going to benefit the team if it's something shit like a legendary meat cleaver or a legendary crossbow or something like that. Like, it's just, it's not going to be beneficial at all. So it's a waste of a perk for me. Um, it is a nice perk, don't get me wrong, it has a cool animation, but again, it's just not nice. Uh, he does have melee mastery, so with the melee mastery and the third perk of him having extra health like a tank, it does make him a really strong solo queue survivor, but like I said, in a team, you are going to have more benefits having the other four supports selected other than Blacksmith. Um, not only that, but you know, you, then you get to the shield RNG perk, and again, it's kind of nice, you know, he gives a 15% damage buff to the team, but... You know, it's not for long, and it has a cooldown where, you know, you have to wait before you can pop another one. And and he also has the chance of not um, breaking amulets when he takes them. Again, it's not as efficient as dropping amulets for warriors. So, uh, primarily, if you're playing support, the best thing to do if you're playing with people who are warriors, if they're good warriors... The best thing you do is always dropping amulets for them rather than using them on yourself and buffing the entire team. Again, it's situational though. If you're playing with randoms, fair enough, you can take the amulets for yourself and then buff up every random on your team. If you're playing with you know a couple of people that you know or even one person that you know if they're playing warrior, it's always going to be more beneficial for you to drop them amulets because like I said, they'll get two shield bar lengths out of that one amulet pop. So uh, like I said, he, he's been blown way out of proportion by a lot of people. Um, you know, claiming he is the best support in the game. It's just absolutely bizarre. I don't know why they think that. Um, but yeah, like I said, they're probably just buying into the hype of the character. And like I said, he is fun to play. Don't get me wrong. The melee mastery is really nice. And he is a, a tanky character. And he can still heal the team because he is a support character. He does has, have his uses. But for me, again, he's just too RNG focused. And I don't like RNG focused characters on this game like that. Um, but anyways, this has been my new tier list video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you guys think of where people belong in the tier list. Um, you know, if you want to make your own tier list, I do have this on tiermaker.com. Uh, so if you search in like Evil Dead Survivor tier list, uh, Black Hail of the King, uh, I did uh, label it as that uh, for the Hail of the King update. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Hit that sub button if you are new to this channel. I do stream this game Monday to Thursday and do a lot of Evil Dead content. And I've been Pixels. You might also viewers. I'll catch you guys in the next one.